Good afternoon from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is Space Shuttle Endeavor Launch Control. The countdown for launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor tonight on Mission STS-89 is continuing on schedule. Launch is scheduled to occur at about 9.48 p.m. Eastern Time. And we are currently at a scheduled hold at T minus three hours. Work at Launch Pad 39A as well as operations here in the firing room they are continuing as planned. This is Endeavour's first mission to dock with Russia's space station Mir. The previous seven docking missions were all successfully done with the orbiter Atlantis. And with an on-time launch, docking of Endeavour with Mir is set to occur at about 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, January 24th. And we're with live pictures now from the crew quarters and the operations checkout building as our seven astronauts are seated for their uh, traditional meal uh, prior to launch. Our Sheripov is a uh, mission specialist, um, as well as we just saw mission specialist James Riley. Here is uh, Vani Dunbar, who is preparing for her fifth flight into space today. She is uh, the most experienced astronaut of all the uh, crew members today, uh, which are commanded by Terry Wilcott who will be leading this crew of seven. Uh, Andy Thomas will be remaining on Mir for four months. Michael Anderson and pilot Joe Edwards are preparing for their first flights into space today. Everybody looks like they're uh, wide awake. They have been, in fact, awake since about 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, they've had two meals since that time, and uh, this is uh, simply a snack that they will have before they uh, make final preparations to board the Orbiter Endeavour and then launch tonight at our preferred launch time of 9.48 p.m. At the shuttle pad, the final inspection team is uh, continu are continuing their operations to make final inspections of the Orbiter as well as to look for uh, any potential debris items that may be on the pad surface or on any of the number of walkways that go run up and down the uh, full length of the vehicle. They'll also be looking for any buildups of ice uh, or frost on the external tank following the loading of the cryogenic reactants. And we have now moved to live TV of our astronauts that are being suited up. Uh, They've just completed their weather briefing and are making an effort to uh, get a little bit ahead of schedule. So they have uh, moved on into the suit-up room. Uh, commander Terry Wilcott, of course, being the uh, commander of this mission, is, uh, did again receive his weather briefing just moments ago and uh, was told that uh, we will proceed with our activities tonight, that there are no technical issues that we're dealing with. Bonnie Dunbar, who is preparing to make her fifth flight into space tonight, is also uh, making final preparations to ensure that her suit is tight and, and snug. Joe Edwards, of course, seen. Uh, he is the pilot of this uh, crew, and he is preparing for his first flight into space. And we have seated here uh, Michael Anderson, again, also making his first flight into space. Jim Riley, also making his first flight into space. He is uh, designated mission specialist number one. And he is uh, saying hello to his uh, friends and family who may be watching or who have actually come to the Space Center to watch his launch tonight. Uh, Salazan uh, Sharapov is a graduate from uh, Moscow State University. Uh, he was also a pilot instructor in the Russian Air Force, and he was I've been training at the Gagarian Cosmonaut Training Center to be an astronaut or a cosmonaut candidate uh, since 1990. Andy Thomas will be uh, making his second trip aboard the shuttle, but this will be his first time to visit the space station Mir, uh, which will be his home for the next four months. Uh, he will replace astronaut Dave Wolf, who has been on Mir since September. Uh, Thomas is uh, scheduled to be the seventh and final astronaut to live aboard Mir.
And at this time, we do have live shots from the third floor of the operations and checkout building as the crew exit their crew quarters and make their way down the hallway toward the elevator, which will take them out to the astronaut van, which will then take them out to the pad. And they're being greeted by well-wishers and supporters, uh, employees at the Kennedy Space Center who like to get a last glimpse of the crew before they head off into space, spending the next nine days in orbit. Five of those days uh, docked with the Mir space station. And the astronauts coming out of the quarters right now as they are being led by their commander, Terry Wilcott, followed by pilot Joe Edwards, mission specialist Bonnie Dunbar, Michael Anderson, Salazan Sharpov, James Riley, and Andy Thomas. And this is a view from the White Room as our commander, uh, Terry Wilcutt, uh, is making uh, final preparations to enter the orbiter. He, is, he will be the first to enter the vehicle so that he, be he can begin the uh, enormous task of making sure that uh, everything is set up and ready to go for a launch tonight. Mission Specialist Andy Tom Thomas uh, making his second trip uh, aboard the shuttle. Again, he will remain on Mir for the next four months, replacing astronaut Dave Wolf, who has been on board Mir since September. Thomas will become the seventh and final astronaut to live aboard Mir. Pilot Joe Edwards has uh, just now uh, crawled into the orbiter, and he will be followed by mission specialist Bonnie Dunbar, uh, the most experienced astronaut in this flight, having gone into space four times already. I gave you step 544. Okay, I'll put 545 to work. RSRT, OTC. RSRT. Step 554, new tape. Copy, that's complete. Tech 1390. 1390. And that was step 554? 554. Okay. OTC, PLT, time check. PLT, this is OTC. I got you loud and clear. How many? Loud and clear, Roberta. Good evening. Good evening, Joe. CACD, CGSS, and ABSX sent to the air to ground one. Verify active on air to ground one and monitor 232 for remainder count and verify loud and clear. CACD? CACD, verify loud and clear. All right, CGSS. CGSS, verify loud and clear. And ABSX. ABSX, please loud and clear. Loud and clear also. Uh, Dave King is being introduced today as the uh, new launch director at Kennedy Space Center. He is only the third launch director the CAPE has had since uh, we had returned to flight and, uh, of the space shuttle. Uh, King began his career with NASA in 1983 as a main propulsion engineer. He later served as flow director for the Orbiter Discovery and as the acting deputy director of the Installation Operations Directorate. And CDR launch director. Go ahead, sir, CDR. Okay, Terry, looks like uh, weather's good. Uh, looks like we got a good vehicle, and we're going to try to get you out of town tonight and uh, be looking forward to seeing you back here in uh, nine or ten days. Well, thanks a million, and uh, we'd also like to extend our thanks to uh, your workforce here at KSC and to all the honorees that are down here uh, for the Space Flight Awareness Launch. And we have orbiter access arm now being retracted away from the vehicle. Uh, this 
Arm can be returned to position within seconds if need be. OTC PLT, APU pre-starts complete with three grade dock max. OTC PLT, APU starts complete with three good APUs. Thank you. Final air surface checks of the orbiter's alevons as well as the rudder are being completed at this time. And this verifies the orbiter's hydraulic systems. And the three main engines are being gimbaled for a final test before launch. And we're standing by for the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood away from the external tank and it is being retracted at this time. Inside the bronze color tank is about 500,000 gallons of super cold liquid fuels that run on the orbiter's three main engines. Copy that. Flight crew, OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. We begin 98, sending our last astronaut for his stay on Mir. We're going to howl for the Wolfman. That did work. We'll see in a few days. 15. T minus 13 seconds. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. We have a go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavor, continuing the union of U.S. and Russian space endeavors. Booster Endeavor, roll program. Roger, roll Endeavor. Houston is now controlling. The roll maneuver is complete. Endeavor is now in a heads down, wings level position, headed to a rendezvous with the Mir space station. Thirty seconds into flight, Endeavor now traveling at about 520 miles per hour. Endeavor's engines are now throttling down to 67 percent of rated thrust. Endeavor is now passing through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 2.3 miles, traveling at a speed of just about 870 miles per hour. Endeavor Houston, go with throttle up. Roger, go with throttle up. One minute, 19 seconds into the flight, Endeavor's three liquid-fueled engines are now back at full throttle, 104% of rated thrust. Endeavor downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, a distance of about 10 and a half miles, traveling at the speed of about 2,000 miles per hour. Just about seven minutes of powered flight remaining. Two minutes, nine seconds into the flight, the booster officer confirms good separation of the solid rocket boosters. Endeavor now downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at a distance of about 38 miles. Houston, performance nominal. Copy, performance nominal. Endeavor Houston, two-engine tau. Uh, copy, Susan, two-engine tau. Two minutes, 35 seconds into the flight, Endeavor's performance has been as expected, and in the event of a single engine failure, Endeavor could now reach the transatlantic landing site at Zaragoza, Spain. Telemetry still continuing to indicate that all three main engines and auxiliary power units and fuel cells are performing well.
Commander Terry Wilkett continuing to fly a very precise course up toward the Mir space station and uh, this view from the Mir space station looking at Endeavour as it continues its approach toward the Mir now at a distance of just about 45 feet. And this view of the uh, crew cabin of Endeavour from its overhead windows. Houston, we're with you, Tedris Z, and via Mir, we're looking in through your two overhead windows. And these are the overhead windows in the crew cabin of Endeavour as it is now just about 43 feet away from Mir. Uh, this view coming from the Mir space station. As Endeavour approaches the 30-foot distance from the Mir space station, uh, this view of the overhead windows in the crew cabin of Endeavour. Very shortly, the crew will begin its station keeping at the 30-foot level before receiving their final go decision to proceed for at the docking with Mir. That docking expected just about 11 minutes from now. The docking will take place in darkness, as this view also is in orbital night. As the two spacecraft now are some 209 nautical miles, or 240 statute miles, high over the African continent. We copy, Rep. The crew is reporting that they have sighted the docking target on board Mir and that uh, no course correction is required at this time. And the crew is now beginning its final approach to the Mir, passing inside the 30-foot mark as it continues a very slow approach for docking with the Mir space station. Endeavour now within 25 feet, closing at a rate of about one-tenth of a foot per second. And contact between Endeavour and the Mir space station confirmed on time at 2.14 p.m. Central Time. Endeavour Houston for Andy, we have a good view of the flight deck. What's it look like? Once Commander Anatoly Soloviev is uh, done with his activities opening up the Mir hatch. 
as well as some housekeeping activities at the conclusion of that. The shuttle will begin a pressurization equalization prior to the opening of the door from the or the hatch from the shuttle side, allowing the Mir 24 and STS 89 crews to greet each other personally. And Endeavor Terry, we have an excellent view of you at the ODS hatch, and you have a go for hatch opening. This is Mission Control Houston. Hatch opening and a first greeting between Mir-24 Commander Anatoly Soloviev and Mir STS-89 Commander Terry Wilcott as Endeavour Mir are passing just to the southeast of Australia. And greetings all around. Reminder to push and hold the BIPS move.
down to the end of things here. Pretty, I mean, we've got to take out the MGBX tonight yet and, and change over this uh, tissue culture equipment. But I think we're pretty much closing out most of our items. Uh, we've got a few hard ones yet that we're waiting on, but uh, they're little items that I think we can come home without. That's how I see it right now. Glad to hear it, Dave. I know you've had a, uh, a very busy four months, and I know that the guys who brought Endeavor up to you have had an extremely busy four days, so uh, we'd be happy to have the pace slacken off just a little. Very good. I tell you, the team's clicking real nice up here, and uh, it's just a pleasure being with uh, my American friends again, and uh, th this whole thing's just a wonderful experience. I can't wait to see you on the ground, and and uh, maybe you'll get, drag me through the ski course a time or two. This is Mission Control Houston, and this view once again of the double space hab module in Endeavour's payload bay. In the aft section of the space hab module is Mission Specialist Bonnie Dunbar. And in the foreground, Mission Specialist Jim Riley, and with his back to the camera, uh, Dave Wolf, who has just completed his 119-day stay as a member of a mere crew. The astronauts have just completed stowing away one of the experiments that was conducted during Wolf's tenure on the Mir space station for its return trip back to Earth and have been conversing over the past several minutes with the scientific community here in Houston to ensure that the stowage was accomplished properly and to provide the status of that stowage down to the payload community here in Houston. Bonnie, we've completed step three. We're closing the hatch. Houston Endeavor. Right. Ellen, the standoff cross is installed and the hatch is closed.
Сталин придет да. в это время открывать. Да, понятно. Ну, в принципе, как и мы в прошлый раз, вот, в сентябре работали, это, или когда в августе мы, да, постыковали его. Ну, хочешь или не хочешь, там в распираторах надо работать. Да, я думаю, что так ты привез себя. На коробке найти, кабель состыковать, лег прикрыть и... Я понял, Владимирович. Ну, и решение еще не принято, так что мы еще будем обсуждать. Что-то это 0,5, это маленькая такая. Какая? Ну, она здесь а вот, 0,5. Ну, там ссылки а -а -а. на документацию. Понятно. Ребята, у нас заканчивается уже на СССР. У нас такое предложение. Сейчас вы включаете СССР 319. Так. А затем у нас идет УКВ. УКВ на Азина. До 24. Houston Endeavor, physical separation, executing SEP burn. Anatoly Kruki at Kriti. Houston Endeavor's crew confirming physical separation of Endeavor from the Mir space station. Земли закладываем 
С-02, 2-0-36-16, единицу. Так, сейчас подскажем. Значит, это, это вычеркиваем. Эту закладку вычеркиваем, да. Отбой подготовки у нас прошел. Это мы не делаем. Рядом. Он должен быть рядом с усилителем. Посмотрите, посмотрите внимательно, он должен быть где-то рядышком. Plus 90, that's good. Yaw zero, Omicron zero. Okay, so we're 
Да, сейчас есть. Сейчас есть. На фоне солнечной батареи висит. Анатолий. Да. Ну вот запрашивали вы по поводу э, этого переноса закрытия люков вправо. Я вот боюсь, что не получится у нас это дело, потому что мы привязаны к телеметрии. У нас дальше уже пустые зоны. У нас телеметрия. Endeavour Houston, we're on the flight deck. Okay, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and start our tape. Uh, what this is is a little tour that we took from Space Hab down the tunnel uh, to the mid deck and the flight deck. And I'll introduce it by saying that you know we're on the day before landing, so there's a lot of activity as we prepare to uh, stow our hardware and finish up our experiment ops. And I hope that what you'll see is the environment uh, that we've uh, been working in and uh, get a feel for what it's like. This is not Cecil Dita Mill. This is uh, our eyeball view of uh, living in zero gravity. So stand by. We're going uh, into the hab right now from the tunnel, which runs from the mid deck to the space hab. It's floating right in front of my eyes, so you're seeing what we see as we come in. We're looking uh, towards the tail of the shuttle. That uh, large white package you see in the center is actually an empty foam cushion that uh, contains some of our transfer cargo. We're now scanning to the starboard side and now to the forward side. You can see uh, the tunnel we just came through and the Space Hab subsystem computer that uh, we set up every day. We have our cue cards up, uh, a handheld mic there velcroed, and then over to the starboard side you see many of the soft uh, containers that were used for our cargo that worked out very well. Now going back towards the aft end, you see the OPM rack. The OPM is uh, safely secured within it. And the cushion that's uh, gently tethered to the front. And now let's go back to the aft end. Uh, we just missed Jim. We'll see him again a little bit later. He was working on MGM, which is in the center there. You'll see it in a moment. Right in front of you are the two SAM sensor heads. Those are acceleration measuring systems. And up there, the blue box is the EOS freezer. And now the two CGBAs that uh, Dave tended to during his flight and that we transferred during the flight. Those are part of our status check every day. And surrounding them are more of the uh, transfer containers, the cargo containers. We get a closer look at the SAMs here. Uh, it's flown many flights. It uh, comes out of the Lewis Research Center. It's an excellent acceleration uh, measurement system. These remote heads can be put anywhere to measure in different frequency ranges the uh, AC accelerations that experiments are exposed to. There are two chambers to the SAMs. Uh, I'm not showing you the active one right now. This is uh, one of the cell test cells. And up on the ceiling there is part of the Japanese experiment for radiation monitoring. It's called the detector unit, strapped to the ceiling with a silver dosimeter strapped around it. Another advantage of a weightless environment is that you can use all surfaces. And off to your right there on the starboard side of the space hab is the uh, DTO-1125, or TIPIC experiment, out of the Johnson Space Center with its uh, dosimeter balls that's trapped in various places. Now if we scan to the port side, we see a large rack that is a combination of two experiments, the uh, VRAFE and the Japanese uh, radiation monitoring experiment. We've been doing quite a lot of work with the RRMD. It has a, an electrical panel there up at the top and then a data recording unit next to the computer. And that's the RRMD laptop that we have set up for keeping track of data. Now we're going back down the tunnel. 
And we're going to pass through the ODS, or the Orbiter Docking System, which is also now our external airlock. Those yellow handrails on your left and right are what I'm using to kind of float myself down the tunnel. I'm going to come in under the EMUs in the external airlock, and we're going to just look up and take a look at uh, what we were calling MS-7 and MS-8 on our mid-deck for quite a few days. Now we're going into uh, a tunnel adapter, which is where we keep uh, several bags of stowage uh, during the mission. Here we keep our laundry bags and uh, flight data file that we're not using. Now the mid-deck is not only a laboratory, it's also our living area. Mike's been working on a lot of our mid-deck experiments. Here he's setting up a camera operation uh, for MTNE. As you know, we've been working uh, some anomalies with that, and we're trying to understand uh, what's happening in that uh, experiment. Just above that is the sea bass experiment, and certainly while you can't see uh, the fish, the big ones or the little ones or the snails, we've been peering through the screens because it's back, backlit back there and find it very interesting. The commander is working out on the bicycle, and we'll all get our turn today. And you can see that we have quite a bit of stowage that uh, we've been moving around on the mid-deck. These two laptops uh, represent what's happening on the GPS experiment, DTO 700-14 and DTO 700-15, which we call SIGI. Now we scan uh, to our port side uh, to the MAR area, the galley area, and the WCS area. And our prime payload just needed to have something to do, so we put him to work, and he's turned out to be very good at this. This is a check of the refrigerator, the TEHM, and one of the things we noticed is that uh, we have to keep the filter clean, and so we just cleaned the filter for those folks. We had a small pallet that had been sucked in. We also have activity up on the flight deck, so we'll just float up there. where Jim uh, has uh, quite a few cameras arrayed. And every time we all get a chance, we come up and take some photos uh, for the Earth Ops folks. These are 70 millimeter Hasselblads. And this is the EarthCam camera set up in the starboard window. The view of the uh, front cockpit, uh, that is the flight plan that's tethered and floating in front of you. And the OCA PGSC, which now has the EarthCam software, is uh, sitting up on our port uh, panel. So let's go back down the uh, inner access deck area. We'll go down head first this time. And we'll say uh, goodbye to the commander, Terry Wilcott, who's just done a superb job with this flight. And I'll say goodbye as well, and thank you again for all the support that we got from the ground. Endeavor now on final approach to runway 15. Endeavor Houston on glide slope on center line. Thank you, Susan. We have the field sign. Roger. Runway in sight. Endeavor is descending at a angle six times steeper than that of a commercial airliner on its final approach. Al altitude now, 3,400 3, feet. Time to touch down, 40 seconds. Landing gear coming down. Landing gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. The drag chute now being deployed.
Coast will touch down. Endeavor now rolling out on runway 15 at Kennedy Space Center at the end of a nine day, 3.6 million mile journey, bringing home astronaut Dave Wolf from his four month stay in space. Thanks, Susan. We have the field in sight. 20 degree dive. We're looking for a 195. Roger, There's radar. Check them out for me. Right out. One and two are good. 3,400 now for 2,000. 2,600 for 2,000. Looking good. Keep that thing in the center. Pre flare, gear is armed. With okay, a good I'm in the pre flare. Nice pitch rate, looking good, 1,000 for 300 feet, 900 for three, a little bit to the right, looking good, six for three, five for three, four for three, straddle the center line. Here. Care is coming. Straddle the center line, nail that ball bar. There's 100 feet looking for 50. Nail the ball bar, a little bit to the right fence, straddle the center line. Final flare, looking good, 35 at 240, 21 at 231. Hold it off, 15 at 223. Hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. One at 209. One at 199, touchdown. Watch, shoot, shoot, shoot. And derotate. Got 9,500 feet to go. I'm looking for 60 knots. That's a good shoot. Yep. Touchdown. That's steering. Center, center line. Looking good. 140 for 60. 125 for 60. Mike, don't let me forget the shoot. 100 for si 110 for 60. 100 for 60 knots. 5,500 feet to go. There's 80 knots for 60, 75 for 60, 70 for 60. Edison? Yeah, it looks good. Beautiful man, nice touchdown. Real good, real good. Joe, beautiful focus, good pictures. Good, good you see breaking? Breaks coming in. Get out your entry checklist, guys. Got some work to do. Outstanding, Vince. Outstanding. That is a good job. Thank you. Hey, Houston Endeavor, we'll stop. Roger, we'll stop Endeavor. Welcome home. Congratulations on a perfect mission to Mir. And Dave, welcome back from 128 days on orbit.